So today, uh, we're, I'm going to introduce you to this project, I guess. Uh, it is a Casio LCD color TV. It's the TV8080. Uh, and I picked one of these up because I, I mean, my original idea was that I wanted to have a portable serial monitor. And so this would just display serial data. And I'd do a sort of, uh, I'd get that TV out library going with the, uh, the Arduino. However, whoops. However, um, I decided it might be more fun to do something else. And when I was taking this thing apart to have a little look at it, I realized there might be some potential for something else. Now, I'm probably gonna need some batteries. Do I have enough? Let's have a look. Let's, uh, should we turn it on? How many do we need? One, two, three, four. The battery contacts in this are pretty corroded, so it's a bit grim, but I think it works. Um, I haven't tested it for some time, so I've been working on other projects, but hopefully it is still in working order. There we go. There we are. And how do we turn it on? There we go. It does work. Uh, so have I got brightness and contrast? There we go. So let's turn that down. So you can, it is working. Uh, the screen isn't brilliant, but you can see a, a little line going across here. That's a scan line. We can turn that uh, to go back and forward. Now, the brilliant thing about this little TV, which works on the analog frequency that uh, we used to broadcast in the UK and no longer do, is, uh, and that's, just, that's similar with loads of countries around the world. Um, it actually has a, oh, it's underneath the aerial here. It has a little hole there for DC in, but also for AV. So that's your composite video jack. Is it composite video? It, uh, it'll accept these kind of uh, video jacks. Now I've got some uh, that go onto a four pole 3.5 millimeter jack, which is the kind of connector that this thing has. But it seems to be a bit of a proprietary one because it's not the same order as these. However, if I wiggle this about enough, we'd be able to see something on the display. I've got myself an old Raspberry Pi here. This is the Raspberry Pi Model B, is that correct? Yeah, B because it's got the, the network port on there. So let's plug in power to the, the, uh, the board and uh, we'll see what we get on the display. So let's just plug this in and it should automatically switch to, uh, to whatever the input is. Oh, getting some interference there from the Raspberry Pi, if you could hear that. Now, once it's booted, I'll have to wiggle the cable a little bit. We can see that the indicator lights on down here, so it's doing something. It's really difficult to get to the right uh, hole, hole, uh, the right connector, so we can see what's going on. Well, that is about as good as it's gonna get, unfortunately. Uh, because this connector won't fit in properly. You can see the, uh, the Raspberry Pi logo there somewhere. So after very gingerly playing around with this, I've actually managed to get a reasonable display on here. And honestly, it's very, I'm showing you now because I'm about to try and take it off and then put it back in again. But uh, it looks okay if I adjust the contrast, uh, we can get it pretty bright. So it's probably around, oh, that looks good, doesn't it? That around there looks pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look perfect, but um, you'll see it's kind of difficult to, oops, let's try it. So you just can't push it in all the way. You just have to hold it, ah. <laughs> there we go. So that's not bad, is it? That's pretty good. What I'm going to do now is shove it in all of the way and then try and push the RCA into a different slot on the, uh, the cable. Ah, there we go. So it works on the, um, on the white slot. I didn't really think about doing that, but uh, so yeah, it works, works pretty well. I'm quite happy with this. 
Uh, all I need to do is hook up that little wireless keyboard and then um, it's got a little mouse on there and we're away. Oh well, I'm probably gonna end up cutting this into the other bit of video. So if there's a bit of a jump, sorry about that. I noticed when I was taking this apart that uh, there was some space saving that could have been made in here. So let's just pull some of these batteries out. And let's unscrew all of these little bits here. I don't think, ah, oh, there we go, I've got it. It's quite a long screw, that one. And then there's another one just here. Nope, let's try a different uh, screwdriver. This one, perhaps. There we go. Now, this is a, a little bit difficult to get apart, so we'll have to encourage it a little bit, I think. I think we'll come back to this. There we go. It looks like it's uh, it's coming apart now. There we go. Let's just uh, take that speaker out. So this is the battery compartment. And you'll notice, let's say we didn't have any batteries in it. There's quite a lot of space here across this section here. So if we take all of that out, it might give us just enough room to pop one of these in, uh, a little Raspberry Pi Zero. It is absolutely possible. This is a battery connector that could come off um, and it would fit. It would actually fit in here uh, with this cover over the top. So I think this is quite an interesting prospect. Um, the Raspberry Pi Zero has video out on the uh, composite. I think there, it's just there where it says TV I'll zoom into that so you can see it. But yeah, it says TV there. The other problem is audio. However, I've got a uh, circuit from Adafruit that uh, will possibly work. Uh, we'll have a look at that. But um, I thought maybe I could turn this into a little YouTube box. So it plays a couple of my uh, latest subscriptions on the little display itself. Now, at the moment, I can't demonstrate this display because it's a bit terrible, but we can take the whole thing out, which is good. Now this draws about 400 milliamps. Can I take it out? It doesn't really want to come out. Oh, I see. We've got the aerial still screwed in, so let's just take that out. not being very careful here. Uh, so there we go. So I can take the whole unit out. And you can see that these boards are, there's a, a small ribbon cable here, but also it's, uh, it's got push pins on here pushed into the board, uh, which is cool. I kind of like it. Now there's a lot of circuitry here we don't need. If it was possible, I think I would um, take some of it, some of it off. Um, I don't necessarily need all of it. However, this is a um, this is our video jack, and I figured if I can get access to the pins that are on the back here, the pads there, then I can solder my own connections to that, and we can bypass using this connector. Um, and what I can do with that is to figure out which one's video and which one's not is sort of just poke around uh, with with an active video signal, which I've got on the Raspberry Pi. Hopefully that'll be okay. I might try and use a diode so that we don't uh, mess anything up. 
But that's the next project um, that I want to t start taking a look at. So if anyone's got any advice, if anyone's seen anyone do anything like this before, I'd really love to know about it. Uh, anyway, we're not, I'm not really intending on doing anything today, but I just wanted to talk about it really. All right, well, there's, a, there's your little snapshot into uh, the ridiculous things I'm getting up to. All right, I'll speak to you soon.